warm welcome and thank you for tuning in, or should I say a chilly welcome looking at this scene. Now I've been very busy this year with a long trip away, a short holiday and all the other time consuming things which come with being a full time photographer with a back problem. However, the dust has settled and I'm looking forward to more time in the woods with Meg as the first signs of spring begin to emerge. Although the seasons are now transitioning, I'm sure we've still got plenty of chilly mornings ahead of us. So I'd like to look back on a magical two hours of winter photography and my first hoar frost in almost six years. Now, firstly, do you remember a video from the end of 2019 when I photographed a majestic weeping birch, which reminded me of the Tree of Souls from Avatar? Now, if you've not seen that episode, I'll pop a link in the description below so you can catch up on it later. But ever since that moment, I've imagined just how magical it would be to see all those delicate drapes of fine branches encrusted in intricate layers of frost because it would make it more luminous and more enchanting just like the Tree of Souls. Now I've never forgotten that vision so full of anticipation I headed straight for that tree over three years later after driving through a superb hoarfrost. However, I'll have to admit to just being a little bit disappointed because it turned out that the freezing mist had evaded that particular tree as it drifted over slightly higher ground. Not to worry though, because I did remember some other very attractive birches just a little bit up further up the hillside and those few meters made all the difference. I think you'll agree that this is a beautiful example of a weeping birch. I mean, it looks great at any time of year, but particularly graceful in its delicate winter dress. As with human friends, I treat these special trees as friends and get to know them. So I spent over an hour with this one birch as a mist and light continuously shifted, slowly working my way around it to tease out the best angle and frame. It not only makes sense to spend time with one particular scene to fine tune a composition, but it also allows you to notice subtle changes in light and the effect that that has on both feeling and mood. As is often the case, my starting point was an instinctive composition, which in this instance included the tree in its entirety. I included a consistent foundation of frosted bracken, which still maintains some structure, an angle which highlighted the branches with the heaviest frost and a gentle lean of the tree into some negative space. There's no need for a large depth of field, so F8 was ample at 50 mil. Fast forward 35 minutes and look how the rising sun has caused the mist to lift and the color of the tree and foreground to warm slightly. The feeling of a chilly morning has been maintained in the distant blue frost, which has also created a greater sense of depth compared to the previous version. Due to the importance of the backdrop, I gave the frosted birch a bit more breathing room to offer a sense of place. That was quite a dramatic shift in colour, which isn't that obvious when seeing it change gradually in person, so it's always interesting to see that difference on the back of the camera. Now in terms of settings, an aperture of f9 offered more than enough definition in the backdrop when shooting at 17mm. Now having what captured what I considered to be a broader view, I was keen to get closer and fill the frame with all those fantastic frosted drapes and branch structure. I opted for a square to give a pleasant kind of self-contained feel, leaving just a tiny bit of space to the left where the fine branches can hang down with a faint hint of a distant tree. The most heavily frosted branches which caught the ambient light dominate the center of the frame. By this point, the warm backlighting was becoming quite strong. So the unedited raw is a little bit dark in order to preserve the highlights. The ethereal experience that I recall has been reimagined by reintroducing the luminance and softening the edges of that brittle detail. The light soon became just a little bit too strong, so I took the opportunity to make a photograph which included Meg because, well, you have to really, don't you? I noticed that there was still mist lingering further up the hillside, so I plodded through the bracken and the heather to find the most wonderful atmosphere and light. Easily the best conditions I've seen in a long, long time. You could say perfect, but obviously there's no such thing as perfect. Even though I class myself as a perfectionist, I try to keep the mindset of strive for excellence, not perfection. The birch at this spot aren't as dramatic, and to be honest, the kind of easily dismissed at any other time, but most things will look enchanting in such phenomenal conditions. 
So here's a couple of more photographs just as the sun started to break through. Due to the detail on the frosted branches and the gorgeous light, I think the broader 2x1 would make a very nice tactile print. But before we do that, let's have a very quick look at how I approached the editing. Okay, so there's going to be a slight change in audio here as I switch to screen recording. Now what we have in front of us is the unedited RAW file. So I'm just going to quickly go through some of the changes that I've made rather than go through every stage to give you a general feel for my approach on this particular image. Now typical of a, a RAW, this is a little bit flat, but it's, it's a very good starting point actually. I added some exposure compensation in the field to ensure that I brought out the shadows, but as you can see by the histogram up here, I'm nowhere near blowing the highlights. It's still darker than I remember, and certainly too dark for the more ethereal print that I would like. So I'm just going to go into the basic tab here and switch over to the one where I've made some adjustments. Here we go. Now admittedly, yes, this is still a little bit flat, um, but it gets me a little bit closer to where I want to be globally. So there's a touch more added to the exposure, plus 0.2. I've knocked back some of the brightest areas of the image with minus 25 in the highlights, plus 20 in shadows, really boosted luminance with plus 40 in the whites. Now if I just zoom in, a little bit closer here. Now these frosted branches can easily look a little bit too sharp and bitty. So I've reimagined the ethereal quality by softening things a touch with minus 10 clarity and really emphasizing the miss with minus five D his. I usually like to boost the lights in the tone curve for some luminance throughout the mid tones. So I've added plus 10 there. The consequence of all the adjustments that we've just made is that we've really, we really lose some detail in the sky. So I've targeted that in HSL with minus 30 in the luminance of the blue. So if I just reintroduce that luminance, you can see the sky is very much washed out. So I'll bring that back down. But the consequence of that decrease in luminance of blue means that the saturation goes up. So if I reintroduce the blue there, it's just a little bit too saturated for my personal preference and the feeling that I want to get from this image. So I bring that back down to minus 35. Um, and also just to lift the warmth in the, the frosted bracken a touch, um, I've added some luminance to the orange. Now what I do at this stage is take the image into Photoshop and add just a very subtle amount of autumn effect. And the reason for that is just to help to soften those edges, give a little bit of glow and really work on that ethereal quality that I can remember, you know, by, you know, still being respectful to reality. Now, I'm not going to walk through that step now because I've done it a couple of times in previous videos. So I'll pop one or two links in the description below so you can see some previous episodes because the way that I approach art and effect hasn't, hasn't changed in years. So here's the final result. Now when adding the autumn effect in Photoshop, it can make things just a little bit darker. So I've reintroduced some brightness in Lightroom um, and pushed things just a little bit more for print purposes. So I've gone to plus 45 in the white. If we have a look at the histogram and the warning lights there, we can see there are just some very minor bits which are blown out, but they do not concern me whatsoever. So if we zoom into these details, the tips of those frosted branches in the sunlight, to my mind, would have been blowing out would have been pure white in person anyway, so they don't concern me. I think they'll print very nicely indeed. Now the only other thing I think it needed was just a bit more contrast. So I've done that in the tone curve. So you can see just a very shallow S curve there. If I turn that off and then back on again, you can see it's a very minor adjustment, but just helps to give things a bit more presence. So if we have a look at this now alongside the original unedited RAW, so I've tried to work on the luminosity, that delicate crispness, working with the softness, the ethereal quality, and the sense of calm as well. 
and I think I'll call this one winter dress. Printing is relatively simple. I think because of the detail in this image, I'm going to opt for a smooth matte paper. Now I do like textured matte papers, but I think the intricate branches, the detail there could just get a little bit lost in some of that texture. Glossy paper, that's a definite no-no for me. I think the, the paper choice has to match your intent and the mood of the image, which for me is delicate and calming and definitely not shiny and vibrant. Photospeed Platinum Cotton 305 is one of my go-to papers. In fact, it's the paper that we use for the entire Woodland Sanctuary exhibition because it's reproduction of detail and color is really very nice. Now, typically for a winter scene such as this, I would opt for a whiter paper such as NST Bright White, but that does carry a little bit of texture. I think the warmer paper won't hurt this at all because of the warming sunlight coming through and that contrasting against the blueness in the sky. Now I've got just the place for this print at home. In fact, I'm going to use this one here. Here's an A2 print that I'm going to trim down and I've got the perfect room for it downstairs. It is a beautiful print. So what I'm going to do is make it available for sale on my website. Just pop that back. Um, but I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is going to be a truly limited edition because a lot of limited editions aren't truly limited because they don't sell out. Uh, whereas this, I'm going to put it available on my website for the next two weeks only. After two weeks, it will never be available to buy as a print again. I'm going to offer it in two sizes, A2 and A3. What I just showed you there was an A2. That's the size that I'd recommend to really appreciate the detail. Um, but in addition to that, you know, I might, over the next two weeks, I might only sell one copy, which is fair enough. You know, someone's going to get a very special print. But I'm also going to offer one large print a complete one-off, one of one. So if you want something extra special, please take a look at my website and you'll find full details on there. Um, you will not be disappointed in the print. It is far, far better to see images like this in print than as a digital file on a YouTube video. Um, so yes, please take a look. As always, your support is massively appreciated. Like I said, two weeks only. Um, but I hope you found some value in this particular episode. Now, I do, my next video, I do have that planned already where I'm going to be doing some, well, the images are something very, very different for me. But I hope you tune in for that. But thank you very much for watching this episode and hope to see you again very soon.